Hello dog lovers, my name is Saro. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. Welcome to live show. In this channel and in this video, we're going to talk about dogs, especially in this channel, we focus on training dogs without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, like shock collars, prog collars, choke chain collars, force or domination, or even being alpha. Instead, we use a simple method and healthy method of training dogs using play and praise as a reward system and uh, get uh, a better and healthier and much more beneficial results from our dogs. Hope you're doing well. Uh, today, we are doing a live show. Just wanted to start with some announcements and then I'll get started on answering your questions. Um, if you want to support the channel, uh, you could do by using the super chat option, which uh, you can, uh, I'm going to quickly show how it looks like. So you have an idea of what we are talking about. So super chat is this thing here, this icon. By clicking this icon, you can donate any amount that you wish uh, you can support by supporting the channel and that's all that's all you have to do this is the icon that we are talking about um, many youtubers they told suggested to me that to show you exactly what that is that's the icon that we are looking because not many of you know about this option so that's the super chat option that we are talking about and you can use that option to support the channel now next week I'm going to go live on Wednesday. Um, the live show would be on Wednesday, July 22nd at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do the weekly shows on Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time anymore. I started this weekly live show few months ago due to the pandemic that was happening around the world and uh, we were I was kind of slow and didn't have much to do so I decided to go live every week and help you with your dog training and dog issues but we're back in this at least this part of the world we're kind of back to normal getting back to normal is not completely normal yet and I know many <clears throat> parts of uh, South, uh, at least North America, I think uh, the America and other countries are having uh, a more difficulty going back to normal. Uh, but at least in this part of the country, Canada, British Columbia, we are kind of going back to normal. So I am going back to normal. I'm getting busy and I can't unfortunately do weekly shows and especially at this time of the day at least uh, in uh, on Fridays so I'm going to try to do a live at 6 p.m Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday evenings that's where I close the daycare M many of you you may not know but uh, just FII uh, that I do run, operate and run and doggy daycare as well. So I'm busy with that as well. And beside dog training and creating content for the channel and you. Uh, so at, on Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m., that could be an ideal time for me to go live and interact with you. We'll try that uh, this Wednesday. So also that targets a... Uh, new audience uh, around the world uh, maybe we'll see how it goes and we'll give it a try so make sure to tune in on next week on wednesday july 22nd at 6 p.m pacific standard time now if you want your questions to be answered for sure today due to because i'm just going to be live for an hour if you want your question to be uh, answered for sure, try to using the super chat option. I'll do my best to answer as many questions as possible. I'm, I'm and fortunate and 
Obviously, I'm not going to be able to answer all of your questions, but I'll try all my best. Those questions that come via Super Chat will be definitely answered right away. So I think that was it. Uh, that's all the notes that I have. Yes, so today, again, we're going to be on only for an hour. Now, one last thing, I wanted to answer a question that was left over from last week, uh, and I didn't get to answer it. And this individual has also questions, uh, has asked this question in the comments area, and it's kind of a important question to answer and talk about, and I wanted to talk about that before we get started to answering your questions. And the question is about a person who has anxiety and uh, stress in its life. So I think it's a she, she went and um, uh, adopted a dog who has stress and anxiety at, as well. So the, re the reason behind doing this um, adoption was that she felt that because she has stress um, and anxiety, she could, they could work together and have this dog who has also anxiety as, and make her life a better life as a, adopting her this dog as an emotional support companion dog. Now, the problem here is they all mean well. You know, the person who's adopting this dog uh, ha means well, wants to help a dog who needs home and but has anxiety. Uh, the problem is if you have anxiety yourself and then you adopt a dog who has anxiety, that dog as well, you're, you're not going to, it's like, um, water with water, fire with fire. You can't, it just doesn't match. Uh, a dog who has anxiety, <clears throat> and especially uh, is, a, uh, is in the shelter and has a lot of anxiety, needs a person who can help it to get over this anxiety. A person who has anxiety obviously is not going to be able to help this dog because a, an anxious person can help an anxious dog. It just doesn't work well. This is very important for you to remember and understand, especially if you're going to adopt a dog, especially if you're going to get a dog. If you're going to get a dog, make sure that you're getting a dog that is proper for you, it's ideal for you. So if you are, for example, in this instance, in this example, this person who has anxiety and stress and is living that way and needs support, has to go and get a dog who is uh, trained to deal with emotional uh, and is trained to be emotional support dog. There are such dogs who are trained and most communities, most countries now have certain dogs who are support, uh, emotional support dogs. So this person has to go get a dog uh, like that. And this dog who has anxiety and stress has to be adopted by a person who can handle and help this dog. So make sure you're always getting the dog that you need, not that the dog that you want. The dog that you need is different than the dog that you want. You want the most beautiful dog, most colorful dog, most healthiest dog, uh, the perfect dog. You want that, yes, but it's the world is not perfect. You won't get what exactly you want. You will get the dog that you need. Uh, so if you if you go with what you need, for example, if you are a busy person and you have two you don't you don't have much time to spend with your dog first of all i don't suggest getting a dog if you're super busy in your life and you don't have time to do other stuff what's the point of getting a dog but if you are kind of a person who's busy but still wants to have a dog obviously you don't go get a dog such as german shepherd or 
Rottweiler or even a beagle. The, these dogs are demand. They demand a different uh, owner, a different dog owner, and a person who is, let's say, very relaxed person, calm person, and is at home most of the day. Who needs calm energy and uh, needs to have a little bit of. Uh, Excitement is now, but not too much. A little bit of excitement in his life. You, you don't go get a Jack Russell, for instance. You know what I mean? You go get a, for example, a Mastiff, where, where they're calm dogs. You know, they're big dogs. They're calm, need a little bit of exercise, a little bit of excitement. They, they calm down. So you have to get the dog that you want. Uh, you need. Don't get the dog that you want. Always be careful about selecting a dog. So many dog owners, for example, uh, especially beagle owners, now they're asking me, I want to get a beagle. Is this a beagle good dog? It depends on your lifestyle. Yeah, what type of lifestyle you have. If, if you have a lifestyle that is busy, can't spend a lot of time with a beagle, better not to get a beagle better not to have a dog, first of all, and if you're going to have a dog, not to get a beagle, right? So I wanted to clarify this and um, you're gonna have a dog. and mention uh, this part uh, because it's important for you to learn and understand and, and figure this out before it's too late. Because if you get a dog and you have a dog already and bring it home and you spend some time you start bonding with bonding with that dog you become uh, attached to that dog and then it's hard to detach yourself with that dog and then you have to deal with that dog instead of living with that dog properly so hopefully that helps uh, just to give you an idea so let's get started and i'm going to start answering your questions and meanwhile again uh, just because it's a short day today I'm just and we just have 45 more minutes to answer your questions and go through all these questions if you really want your answer your questions to be answered use please the super chat uh, option and um, we're going to start with Irvi uh, I like the, the the profile pictures that's a Cool profile picture. Hello, I have a seven seven month old beagle female. She has tick problem. Can we apply coconut oil right now? We have used medicine and tick shampoo already. Hmm. Okay. Well, for now, I don't I don't know if coconut oil is going to help. I think what is going to help is a product called which is natural product. It's called, uh, let me share here. It's called Diatomaceous Earth. This is the product that I'm talking about. Um, if you could get this product, that would be better. Uh, so this is the food grade. It comes in few types, uh, types, uh, grades, uh, food grade and also not food grade. The, what I like about this is that because it's a food grade, it's a safe product that you can add to your dog's diet. But uh, because it's a powder as well, it comes in a powder form, you can rub it uh, on your dog. Uh, basically what it is, it's um, fine grind, grinded uh, shells, uh, seashells, uh, which is edible. They're, they're natural and edible, so it's it's a, it's safe for dogs to eat it. You don't want to inhale it. You don't want your dog to inhale it. You want it to eat it yourself. Also, you don't want to inhale it. It it has particles, sharp particles that may cause damage in your uh, respiratory system. So what you want to do? Make sure that you drink it or yourself, or you're going to give it to your dog. Mix it with the food. Uh, I've been using this product myself, Diatomaceous Earth. It's called Diatomaceous Earth. They say it in a different way, Diatomaceous Earth, some, some weird, but that's what it is. 
it's a fine ground, grounded grinded uh, uh, shell, seashells uh, that you can add it to your dog diet so it will prevent from developing fleas and ticks. But also you can rub it on your dog's body uh, and it will, um, you know, deal with uh, fleas and ticks and like that. So just you can get this either in your pet store, in your local pet store, or you can order it online or, you know, any health store, I would assume, will carry this. So this is something that is natural. You can use it and uh, see the results. But coconut oil, I'm not sure if it's the answer at the moment. All right, next question. Uh, how do, uh, hi, how do you train a dog to stay off your bed and sleep on his? <clears throat> so, good question. Uh, one of the things that you, you have to realize and also be clear to your dog is that whether you're allowing your dog to be on the bed or not. One of the problems of dog owners is that they're not clear enough to their dog. What I mean by that is if you're going to ask your dog to be on a bed, you have to ask your dog to be on a bed all the time. You can't just say, uh, just because today is, let's say it's Friday and I feel good, uh, I'm going to let you come on the bed, you know. But tomorrow, I, I don't feel like having you on the bed, okay. So you can't be saying one day I will let you on the bed, next day I won't let you on the bed. You know, that's one, one of the things that you have to realize. Be clear to your dog. Is your dog allowed always on the bed or always not allowed on the bed? <clears throat> that's very important for you and your dog to choose and decide and implement. Dogs can figure out because today it's Friday, you let me on the bed. But tomorrow you don't let me on the bed or how come on Tuesday you let me on the bed but on Fridays you don't let me on the bed they don't get the point the dogs are black and white you know the personality of them is yes or no they either they they need to know yes or no if you are clear about yes and no's it will be easier for your dog to understand so one of the things that I want you to uh, decide now, is your dog allowed to be on your bed all the time or is your dog allowed on the, is not allowed on the bed all the time? You, you have to make that decision. It's a hard decision to make because how come I can't sleep with my dog, but I want it also. But I want it. It doesn't work with dogs. You either make sure that your dog stay, sleeps on the bed or doesn't sleep on the bed. Once you decide that, it would be easier for your dog to sleep on his own bed. So the other thing that you can do is for now, every time your dog gets on the bed, just say no, remove it from the bed, uh, maybe offer a nice bed that your dog can sleep, buy the most expensive bed that you can afford, the best bed that you can afford for your dog, let your dog, lead your dog there, or put that bed in a crate and keep your dog in the crate at night. So sleeps in the crate uh, on a nice bed, and the crate is right beside your bed. So your dog is feeling you, is smelling you and is sensing you, but is not physically on the bed is beside the bed and is on, it's on his own uh, comfortable, cozy bed. If you do that for, the fir for maybe a week, after a week, your dog is going to realize, okay, they don't want me on the bed. They want me in my bed. I'll follow that, right? No argument. But the problem is that one day you say yes, one day you say no. You have to make that decision. It's very important for you to make that decision. Okay. 
Morning, Saro. Why does my ball, uh, that's a question from Carlos, my dog, my ball dog get put her paw on my pit ball face and start fighting with him when I come outside the backyard? And also, how can I make my bulldog stop jumping my fence, seven, seven feet fence? Okay. I'm guessing your bulldog is a younger one, a puppy one, and your pit bull is an older one. I'm guessing that. So the be behaviors that you're uh, describing are behaviors of a dog or a, a young dog who who is bored who doesn't have a good physical and mental daily stimulation and doesn't have uh, a good playmate your pit bull is is probably not the ideal playmate for your bulldog so your bulldog is getting uh, you know they do their own thing it, it seems like you're describing or puts its paw on the face of my pit bull that's what they do they play that's how they uh, interact and that's how they um, say i want to play but your pit bull doesn't want to play probably either he's tired or he's older doesn't want to do it so and jumping the fence, seven foot fence, right? Right. It's a sign that your pit bulldog is bored. It doesn't have enough mental and physical stimulation. So therefore, what is happening is uh, is coming up with ideas to to you know release this pent up energy, right? So they have this pent up energy as to release it is releasing either by jumping on fence or annoying your pit bull. So focus on providing daily and every day physical mental stimulation for your dog. So what are those? Uh, I forgot to prepare it. But what are those physical mental stimulation for your dog is uh, basically um, exercise you know provide different form of exercise don't think that your pit ball is going to be dog sitting or puppy sitting or babysitting your uh, bulldog you have to provide walks uh, play play sessions um, this is what you have to provide your dog a daily five essential needs exercise training socialization care and affection your pit ball is not uh the solution that's i'm guessing you're using your pit ball hoping that your pit ball is going to entertain your bulldog you have to walk your dog exercise your dog you have to take it for a walk so you have to allow your pit bulldog to play with other dogs other good dogs other puppies or other young dogs uh you have to do daily training training stimulates your dog's brain and mind and when we are talking about training, and this is very important again for you to realize that when we talk about training, let me uh, get it ready. When we talk about training, we're talking about um, playing with your dog. In, in a way, you're playing with your dog, but it looks like you're training your dog. Uh, I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by uh playing and training your dog in when i say training uh this is what i mean by training this, some it looks like this okay i'm um, gonna we'll remove this so this is training okay this is training i'm training annie now uh, i'm saying come sit stay and basics i'm training annie at this moment it looks like we are playing right but it's basically i'm um, training annie so uh, all i'm doing is practicing the commands in a play form uh, and this is the difference between my training system and other training system other training systems they use treats and food to get the dog to get motivated and do stuff but in my, with my method, you're using play and praise to reward the dog. So in this case, as you can see, I'm uh, 
uh, using Annie's favorite toy. We're playing fetch in a way, uh, but we are practicing sit, calm, sit, stay, and uh, you know, for example, I want my Annie to drop the toy and let go of the toy. Uh, I'm practicing that. So training, this is how training it, it looks like. So training should be fun, should be uh, cool, should be um, entertaining, should be uh, in, uh, educating, should be positive, should be helpful, should be uh, have should, ha should have uh, good results. So training is one of the things that you need to work on. Okay, so. When we talk about training, that's what I'm talking about training, okay? Training is not just to do uh, training as soldier. That's not what I'm talking about uh, or working out. It's training a dog, right? That's how it looks like. And if you want to learn more about how to train dogs, your dog or your puppy, again, you can join one of my online courses, uh, which the link is in the description area. Uh, basically, you go to sorrowdogtraining.com and you get to my uh, online courses and register and start learning how to train your dog properly. So your bulldog basically needs exercise, needs daily training, needs socialization. You know, your bulldog is socializing with your pit bull only. So it's not, a, it's, it's okay, but it's not a good idea. You want to socialize your uh, pit bull with other dogs as well and on and on, care and affection. So if you provide those, then um, you're gonna see that the behavior is gonna change and then you're gonna be less annoyed and your pit bull is gonna be less annoyed as well. Uh, Tavlin is in the house, thank you for being here. I have a two-year-old beagle, he never behaves. Uh, when we take him to others home, he is like a street dog there. <laughs> he never behaves. We have been teaching him to behave for one year, but never behaves. So this is a good, uh, good uh, question and brings me to the idea that most dog owners, what happens is, when they train their dog, they train their dog um, in one environment and maybe, first of all, they don't train their dog properly. So what I mean by properly is you have to train your dog in a way that your dog, your beagle learns, first of all, what the basics are. And then once they learn the basics, you have to expand the basics. You have to go to different levels and different zones. The levels are, instead of going, staying on basic obedience, which is sit and stay, for example, you go to the next level, which is uh, you tell your beagle to sit and stay, but <clears throat> stays for five minutes, stays for 10 minutes up to 10 minutes <clears throat> and then or uh, it goes and stays for half an hour and goes on and on and on you know it becomes a, 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 a training session that starts with the basic and goes all the way to uh, intermediate level and advanced level so that's one thing that you have to remember you can't just stay on the basic for, so you have, probably you have stayed for a year on the basic. That's why you haven't gone to the next level. So the next levels are going to make it uh, introducing your dog, first of all, the three Ds. We call them three Ds, which are distance, duration, and distractions. You have to add more distance, more duration, more distractions. What are they? Uh, duration, you know, instead of just sitting and staying for one minute, you're expanding it to up to 10 minutes uh, distance. Instead of just being in front of your dog, you're going 30 feet away from your dog eventually. Uh, distractions, instead of just doing it at home, you're doing it in different environments. So this brings me to the next point that you have to practice everything that you've practiced so far 
different environments, which I introduced five environments. And again, everything that I'm explaining to you, you can learn all of them in details in one of my online training courses. Uh, so you start training your dog at home and then in the backyard and then front yard and then street and then dog park. Uh, so you have to practice everything in different environment as well. So your beagle ha has to be uh, comfortable and be uh, able to not only listen to you at home, but in different environments as well. So if your beagle is not listening in somebody's home, that means your beagle is not ready to First of all, it's not ready to be in that environment and listen to you. It overwhelms it. It becomes uh, it becomes like you know uh, a kid in a in Disneyland, you know, fun environment. They don't know what to do. They get overwhelmed with all the inter attractions that are going on, so they get overwhelmed and they go nuts. You have to control them. You say you have to teach this kid who is in the Disneyland. Okay, we're going to go line up for uh, this ride and we're going to take this ride first. And then we're going to go take that ride and then that ride. And then we're going to go have a lunch and then we're going to go have that ride. And you have to structure the, the fun event that is happening that day. Uh, so first of all, work on the three Ds. And second of all, if you're somebody in somebody's home and your beagle is mischievous and misbehaving, put it on leash until you get to that level that you can control your beagle. Okay, uh, good question, and you know a lot to think about and do. Carlos, mm. okay, I talked about that. And Tablin is asking, will a golden retriever hurt a two-year-old beagle? Uh, fortunately, uh, and you know, normally I would say no, but you never know. <laughs> golden retrievers are very soft animal, soft dog breeds. Beagles are very soft breeds as well, so they go well together. So I have a picture of goldens and beagles. Those are two of my favorite breeds, actually. Uh, if I had the opportunity, I would have a lot of beagles and goldens because they're just fine together and they should be fine. But you'd never know, uh, you know, some some goldens have been showing aggression and some uh, beagles also have shown aggression. So you never know. Uh, Wakes has, is saying hello. Thank you for being here. Pr Priyanka is here. How much sleep does a one-year-old dog take? Uh, usually a, a one-year-old, now this is a good question, I did a, a, a video about it actually a few weeks ago, I think, yeah, uh, I did a month ago. Actually dogs need to sleep a lot, they, uh, you know, in general, we don't realize that dogs uh, need to sleep and they, we have to allow them to sleep uh, as much as possible. In general, most of the days of a dog has been spent, is being spent uh, sleeping. The only reason that they're up and doing something, now if we're talking about pet dogs, is either they're eating or they're playing or they're um, walking or they're, um, you know, um, lunging around. Other than that, they are sleeping, right? So sleep is something that is very healthy and beneficial for dogs, and they need it. They need, uh, you know, even humans, we need to sleep a lot, actually. You know, you used to say, you know, you only need to sleep six or seven hours. Actually, we need more than that. We need a lot of sleep, humans as well. Animals, they need to sleep. If we sleep, when we are sleeping, we are... Uh, we are healing our body, we are detoxing our system, detoxing our body. When we are sleeping or dogs are sleeping, animals, when they sleep, they are repaired, the damaged cells, damaged areas. So dogs overall, they know 
how good uh, how good and how beneficial sleep is and they sleep all the time uh, and we need to actually learn from them and sleep us ourselves uh, sleep a lot too but but we don't do it we don't sleep much right we work a lot and we we think that if we sleep we're wasting time and it um, it's not good but in general they need to sleep a lot uh, so i would suggest um, watching a, a video that i'm going to put in the chat area uh, i'm going to call it sleeping dogs I'm going to put the link of this video in the chat area. Go ahead and watch that for more information. Um, critical Thinker is in the house. Hi, Sarah and everyone. Nice to see you. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, Carl, uh, I have a beagle that loves to hunt, and this is also what I want him to do. Problem is that... He runs after all types of animal, horses, cats. Is it possible to train him to not? Of course it's possible. Anything is possible as long as you invest time and effort in doing it. And your beagle has to also be, you have to invest a lot of time and effort in your beagle in order for your beagle to learn. Uh, your beagle has to repeat and understand exactly what you want it to do uh, in order to do it. It, it. it only happens if they, if you repeat the concept or the, um, the idea that you want to for your beagle to do. So you can identify a specific task that you want your beagle to do. You want your beagle to hunt. And specifically, you want it to hunt, let's say, rabbits, right? <clears throat> so you have to focus on investing time and effort in training your beagle to only focus on rabbits. So, for example, first thing that I would do, I'll keep the beagle on a leash, on a kind of a short leash, start with a short leash. So... <clears throat> you can control it <clears throat> first of all you want to control excuse me guys uh first of all you want to be able to control it so you keep it on a leash for next a year or two because that's how long it takes to get the results that you want if you want your beagle to hunt uh, there are two types of scenarios your beagle is natural naturally uh, a rabbit hunter or it needs to be taught to hunt a rabbit, for example, right? If it's naturally born with that talent, all you do, you just uh, uh, use and cherish that uh, talent and you encourage that talent. If it's not, then you have to teach it and train it. And sometimes what happens is some breeds and some beagles, some dogs, are not designed or bred or ideal for that task unfortunately it's just they're not cut for it what i mean by that is for example uh when i imagine if this happens to all kids and everybody maybe you experienced that too when we were kids i was a kid for example i wanted to be a movie maker i wanted to be a director i wanted to be a filmmaker and I wanted to go to art school, but my parents was, were against that and they wanted me to become a doctor or mathematician, which I didn't have any interest into it. I wasn't a rabbit hunter, right? I wanted to do films. I wanted to chase horses and cats and all that, <laughs> right? I wasn't uh, a rabbit hunter, ra in, interested in rabbits. Maybe, but uh, not too much, right? So I didn't show any interest in fil in math, math or being a doctor because it's just not in me. It, I didn't have interest in, in my soul. My uh, I wasn't bred to be a doctor. 
You know what I mean? I was bred to be a filmmaker. And you can see uh, the t touches of filmmaking and that passion in my videos and in future videos you're going to see. I have that passion and I rub it in my videos as well. So you can't train a beagle to do certain thing if it's not there. If the instinct, instincts, and also the passion and the, the drive is not there. So that's those are the challenges that you have. You have to, you have to see if your beagle is natural born uh, hunter or not. If it's not, and if you need to train it, if if it has the passion for it, right? And if you try it for a while and you see that it's not working and it's not going after uh, rabbits and it's not showing a uh, hunting rabbit, that means is it's just not bred for it. It's not there. So you all you have to do is all you have to do is just give up and find another beagle who has the passion and who has the the talent to be a hunter. Hope that makes sense. Tamalin is asking, can I feed a beagle puppy crab? Yes. And no, uh, seafood is not natural diet for canines. Uh, it's good to have once in a while. It's something that you're introducing to a dog's diet and you have to kind of see if it's going to work well or not. All you have to do is give it a try. If you see diarrhea, if you see it's not sitting well, if you see complications, then it's not sitting well with that dog, with your dog. Um, with your puppy, but overall, seafood is not a natural diet for uh, dogs in general. So it's something that you have to try it. You know, fish is good to give uh, as a as a pro, as a source of uh, omega threes. Um, it's okay, but crab is something that is a little bit different. You can give fish as a source of omega threes, sardines and things like that, but not, not too far. Don't go too far to crab and you know <laughs> other types of uh, seafoods. Um, I D S Parks seventy six. I hope. That's the <laughs> that's the profile name. That <clears throat> sorry. My family has an eight-month-year-old beagle. Should I crate train him or let him sleep in a dog bed? They're both good ideas, and the best idea is actually putting the bed in a crate and train it to sleep in a crate in a bed. That's the best thing, you know. Allowing a dog to enjoy being in a crate and having that option for you to have a dog trained in for a big uh, crate is one of the best things that you can do to to your dog and to yourself for example if if i uh, you know i need a little bit of break from my puppy or my dog i just invite annie in the crate and she goes in there voluntarily slips in there um, make sure that you know <clears throat> the crate is pro proper size for your dog, for your puppy, and they're comfortable in there. There's a nice comfortable bed they can sleep. Uh, my Annie, she was growing uh, long. She's a mix of a, a beagle and basset and collie, so she's getting long, right? So <laughs> I had a crate. Uh, and it was this size, and she was fitting pro in there. But you know, she because she's getting long, uh, I realized that she needed a, a bigger crate. So I, she, and when it was the normal crate, she was like, oh, "Okay, I'll go in there. All right." Uh, I realized that she's getting long, and she needs a bigger crate. So I, cr I gave her a, a long, bigger crate, and now. She goes in there, no questions asked. Uh, I have nice bed in there. She goes in there and sleeps uh, all the time. And 
Uh, it's funny, in the mornings, I used to wake her up. She would come out right away. But now, because it, it, the bed is nice and cozy and the crate is nice and big and ideal size for her, I open the gate, uh, crate gate. She doesn't come out. She's, oh, I want to stay here. It's nice and cozy. So I have to ask her to come out. Uh, make it cozy and all that, and they will love it to stay there. It's good idea to crate train any dog. If you have the opportunity, and if you have a dog or a puppy, and start crate training. And uh, the bed also, the options of beds is good to have one or two outside uh, in different different rooms and areas, so your dog can go and sleep in those beds as well. A uh, critical thing, thinker is asking, uh, dogs are pack animals. They do not like to be alone. Exactly, yes. Uh, my dogs are next to me always. They sleep in my bed too. So, yeah. So, as long as you allow them to sleep all the time and never say, never, never say, don't come on my bed, they should be fine. Uh, Richard is asking, how do I stop my running up? the stairs, he can get under the stair gate I have installed. How do I stop my running up the stairs? He can get under the stair gate I have installed. I don't understand the question. Uh, sorry, my nine weeks old pup stops. How do I stop it from running up the stairs? Oh, okay, I think I get the point. The question, you have a nine weeks old. A nine weeks old shouldn't be going up up and down stairs. Uh, that's one of the no-nos. Any breed, especially large breeds, you don't want to allow them to go up and down the stairs until they're completely or fully uh, grown up. So for puppies and nine weeks old, you have to have an area that it's designed for your puppy to be. What I mean by that, by that is uh, you have to have an area that you have selected and chosen for your puppy to be um, always staying in that area. So you can use an expand. Let me show you what I mean by expand. Um, So expand, um, I'm not getting it, doggy expand. Doggy expand, how come I'm not getting the results? The okay, expand is basically uh, some sort of wiring that uh, it, it, you can put anywhere it comes in eight sections you can fold them any way that you want um i don't understand how come i can't get the results that i want doesn't show me okay i got it okay so this is what you're looking for expand okay somewhere that you can put your puppy in it uh, so it's this area is nice and uh, nice and safe for your puppy, right? If your puppy has a bed in it, uh, has a um, it's food and water bowl in there. Um, it's safe. It's in an area that it's safe for the puppy to be. So a nine months old has to be in that area uh, and in in a crate maybe. All you have to do is just uh, keep it there or under control or in a crate. Don't let it loose to be roaming around the house, the whole house going up and down the stairs and wherever it wants. Has to be in certain area only when you are where you are and it's safe for your dog or your puppy to be. All you have to do is just focus on remembering where your puppy is. Your puppy has to be either with you or in a crate safely. 
Tavlin is asking, which is the best game played by Beagle? Uh, there are certain games that you can play with your Beagle. What I'm going to do, uh, again, let me show you um, the games that you can play with your Beagle. I'm going to put a link in the chat area, games to play. I'm going to call it games to play. Uh, click on the link of that. Uh, in the chat area, there are tons of games that you can play with your Beagle. Um, not only Beagle, but with your dog in general. Um, thank you, a Critical Thinker. Uh, Terra Ryder is asking, hi, sir. Nice to see you again. We, have a, we are now a six-month-old Beagle, and she's very good with puppy training pad. She pees and poops there 99% of the time. How do we transition to the to her training outside? Uh, if you if you have a six months old already, you should have already started the transitioning. I usually don't suggest to train dog or puppies on part, pee pads anyways, uh, but if you have, you have to start taking your puppy out now. Uh, what you do, invest a weekend or a few days that you have the days off. You know, take your uh, six-month-old beagle every few hours, two, three hours, take it outside, let it do its business outside. Remove the pee, pee pad as well. That's not necessary anymore. It's just something that I, I, I did a video recently uh, and I talked about it. Pee pads are mainly for emergency cases. Uh, you can't use pee pads uh, forever. Pee pads are not ideal tool to potty train a beagle or a dog. It's just something that you use it in emergency cases. Naturally, they have to be potty trained outside. Uh, sorry, guys, and uh, I'm going to answer a few more questions, and that would be it for today. And uh, there are lots of questions still. And let me see, where are we? Okay, I think we are here. Got lost in the questions. Uh, William, funny problem. I have my pup has great recall. She, however, is terrible about the other basics. We're very obedient, but really struggling sitting and etc. Uh, I think the reason that happens is because you're depending on one thing. Maybe you're. What I mean by that is either you're using treats. And you're not, when you depend on treats and you're not using treats, therefore you're not going to get the results. You haven't, first you, you first of all, you started probably training your uh, pup with uh, treats and then you didn't phase it out. So your dog is still hoping to get uh, the task, the, the treat after the task. So it got used to it. Either that, or uh, you haven't practiced enough properly. So what I would suggest is for de dedicate 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes to half an hour a day, to practice everything properly without the use of treats, uh, and train your dog to make sure that it does everything that you're asking uh, for the next, I would say, three months, practice it, and then you'll see that you're going to get results. You have to practice a good form of training for a long time for the dog to learn. If, if you don't, then if it's once in a while and here and there, then that's what you get. You get uh, results 
uh, that are not ideal. So yeah, just uh, it takes time, but uh, uh, it will. Uh, yeah, it's very slow, but you have to take your time and practice it. Great. Elizabeth is in the house. Thank you for being here, Elizabeth. So uh, my one-year-old mini poodle, Timmy, won't stop trying to rip us, us up as he's combing bed and dragging it all over in, uh, the house. Why? I love your show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Timmy won't stop trying to rip his combing bed and dragging it all over the house. So what has happened, uh, your Timmy has uh, come up with this idea of uh, um, entertaining itself. So uh, this dragging the bed and doing this is, first of all, it's trying to entertain itself and it's trying to come up with a way to release that pent up energy that has, okay? So what has happened is probably you're not providing enough exercise and training and socialization. You, you remember me saying all this? You need to focus on providing exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection on a daily basis. If you don't, Timmy is going to tell you that I need those. Timmy is doing that behavior not to piss you off. Is telling is doing that behavior to tell you, Mom, I need exercise, I need proper amount of exercise every day, I need training, you need to train me every day, we need to interact with each other every day, I need to get some socialization every day, I know you're providing proper care and affection with me, but that's not all I need, I need all of these in this order every day. So Timmy is telling you what you need to do and what you need to provide for Timmy. So it's just giving you heads up. It's communicating to you. Uh, I think this would be the last question of the day. Um, I have a four month old beagle. My doctor says that he is given proper nutrition by us, but still he eats his poop and sniffs on other others as also. He also growls a lot and whines when left alone as time off. So you have a four month old and is given proper nutrition and still eats poop. Uh, the reason that happens is even though you're giving the best nutrition, it doesn't mean that is the ideal nutrition. Uh, it has to be ideal, it has to be balanced and it has to be ideal. Even though you're giving the best, it doesn't mean that it's ideal. Ideal, what I mean is, it has to benefit your dog's um, nutrients. It has to get enough nutrients and the body has to benefit from that those nutrients. If your dog is not getting those nutrients, doesn't mean, doesn't matter how much money you spend on that food, how much or how much less you spend money on that food, it doesn't, it doesn't provide nutrients to your dog. So when a dog is lacking nutrients, it will try to get it from other sources. And one of those sources is um, eating poops, right? So definitely you want to make sure that you're feeding proper nutrient nutri nutrient fill full uh, diet which usually is not kibble or dry food that's first thing that you have to remember so if you're feeding kibble or dry food stop feeding that doesn't matter how much you're paying for that bag of food and how uh, and if your vet is suggesting you to buy the most expensive kibble or dry food or feed whatever they're selling, that's not the food to feed. If you're feeding your dog dry food, kibble, that's the number one clue that your dog is not getting enough nutrients. And two, make sure that you're feeding fresh food, either raw or home-cooked diet, add some uh, egg, you know, raw egg, some uh, green leafy vegetables, uh, add uh, turmeric, 
those things uh, will make it be more nutrient dense uh, food and diet. So therefore your dog is not gonna lack those nutrients and is gonna be uh, not um, looking for those nutrients, right? So that's one thing that you have to consider. If you wanna learn more about nutrition and food and all that, check out my channel. I have several videos about uh, diet. And if it's growling and worms when it's left alone is because you haven't taught your beagle. Uh, first of all, a four month old is too soon to be left home alone. You don't leave a puppy left home alone uh, for at least one year. They have to learn to tolerate being left alone, which it takes the time. And during this one year, you're, you're teaching them to stay and wait command also. And practicing with them until they learn to tolerate uh, not being around you or with you. So those things are something that you have to consider and work on and learn how to do it. That's all today. Unfortunately, that's all of the questions that I can answer today. Uh, again, from next week, uh, next week, uh, the show will be on Wednesday. Uh, July 22nd at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you want your questions to definitely be answered, make sure to support the channel by uh, Super Chat option. And uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon as well to be notified as soon as I post my next video and if I go live. And also Sunday, I have a cool video coming up. Uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, make sure to watch that video. It's uh, it's a different video, but it's a cool video. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this session. So I'll see you on Wednesday, July 22nd at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Have fun with your dog.